Good morning, Warrior Nation. I'm excited uh, to bring to you another uh, Summer Sparks uh, Bible lesson. Uh, this week's uh, chapel uh, focuses on the parables of Jesus. This is particularly exciting for me because Jesus uses uh, everyday life to explain the kingdom of God. And he also gives us the opportunity to think about how we can use everyday life to explain the kingdom of God and to introduce people to God. So as you listen to uh, and watch the video today, think about ways that you can come up with stories that help people understand God's kingdom. Also, uh, I wanna remind you that there will be three questions at the end of the video. You want to answer those to accumulate uh, bucks in your warrior wallet so that you can obtain great prizes during Jumpstart Week. Also, parents and students, don't forget that if you watch every weekly chapel, answer every question, then your whole family will receive a summer treat. We are hoping that we could give out uh, many summer treats where families can go out and uh, have a, a good time together. So watch the video, The Parables of Jesus, taken from Matthew's chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Let's go. seed, the tiniest of the seeds. But you will grow up to be an enormous bush that birds can land upon. I was hoping the mustard seed costume would be waterproof. It is not. Uh, Becky, I, I think we've got the wrong script. This story doesn't have Jesus or the disciples or anyone in it. It just has a mustard seed. The mustard seed story is one of Jesus' parables. You should ask our guest director. Mr. Cashbeard! Yes, Todd? Why are we doing Jesus' parables? Well, you see, Todd, Jesus was trying to explain the kingdom of God in ways we could understand. But... We didn't say kingdom of God in that story once. Okay, think of it this way. It's like a plumber who usually just uses a wrench, but sometimes he has to use a monkey wrench, which allows him to approach a problem from a different angle. So, there you go, Todd. Did you understand that? Not even a little. All right. Let us do the Good Samaritan parable. I am a traveler. I am on my way to... <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Robbed an abandoned, ridden valley. Who would have thought? Excuse me, um, Rabbi, if, if you could just... Okay, sorry to waste your... Oh, oh, Levite. Hey, Levite, I'm badly hurt. Could you... No? All right, then. Oh, oh no, a Samaritan. Those people are all these mean... To hey, hey, what are you doing? Fixing your wounds. You are my neighbor. Absolutely stunning interpretation of the story. That's the whole story? What happened to the robbers? Did they get caught? Was there a reason the rabbi or Levi didn't stop to help? Why tell the story when it doesn't tell us enough? You see, Todd, it's like a dark cave. It is? If a person is exploring a dark cave, they use a lamp to see what is down there. It's not the same as the light of the sun, but it can be used to illuminate what you are trying to see. That's how Jesus was trying to explain God's kingdom to us. We're going cave exploring now? I'm not dressed for that. Let's take five, everyone. Do any of you know why we're doing a show about parables? I can't get a straight answer out of Mr. Cashbeard. I ask him a question, he tells me a story. I ask him another question, he tells me another story. Why won't he just tell me what he means? In his story about the plumber and the monkey wrench, you're supposed to be the plumber. What? You're trying to tell God's big story, and so you need to use different tools sometimes. 
Sometimes you use things like God's commandments, and other times you use things like parables. I was thinking that the plumber in the story is God, and the tools were all different ways God's story is made known to us. Wow. I hadn't thought of it that way. See, you both can't even agree what the story means. That's how confusing it is. You know what? Next time he says something to me, I'm going to tell him a story. Yeah, we'll see how he likes it. Look, it is my prodigal son who has been gone. I'm back. Oh, perfect, Becky. Todd, it's your line. Is something wrong? Well, you see, there was a man with a concession stand that sold hot dogs. And people would come to him and say, I'd like a hot dog with ketchup and mustard on it. And sometimes he'd make the hot dog how they asked, and sometimes he wouldn't. But they never said anything about it either way, so he never knew if he was doing it right or wrong. Food for thought, Todd. Hmm, food for thought. Oh, I didn't answer your question. I just made up a story. I didn't tell you anything. Yes, you did. What does everyone think Todd's story is about? I think Todd is the concession stand worker in the story, and he is frustrated by not being told if he is doing the right thing in the show. I thought the lesson was you need to tell people when they're doing a good job. See, Todd, your parable has a couple of different lessons to it. Jesus used stories about people and things from everyday life so people could relate to his message but still explore the deeper, more powerful truths underneath. But why wouldn't he just skip the story and tell it to them straight? A lot of the things Jesus taught were very controversial and challenged the laws and practices of those in power at the time. It was the kind of stuff that could get him killed on the spot. Parables were a way for Jesus to say things without saying them. Okay, but answer me this. If parables are so great, why don't we use them today? Wait, so the Kinect videos are parables? Hey, how long have you guys been watching this? Because I do some embarrassing stuff. Todd, quit breaking the fourth wall. Whoops, gotta go. Hope you like the stories. Oh, parables. Todd! Actually, Becky! Oh, right. So what are stories? What are parables? Parables are stories. Stories are parables. <laughs> stories about the kingdom of God. God wants you to tell a story as well. So you come up with parables. Don't forget, answer the questions, and I will see you next time.